I'm talking today to Anthony Abua, who is the director of Woolwich Boys, a new film that will be released in November in the UK. Anthony, tell me how you got into filmmaking. Well, I got into filmmaking through, um, I was an actor first. Um, kind of got frustrated with the way the industry was going with regards to African, African stories. Yeah. There weren't the kind of roles that I wanted to... There weren't many parts, there probably. Many, no, there weren't many parts. And not very good parts. Not very good parts at all, quite stereotypical, particularly mm. when it came to West Africa and mm. when, they dealt with, when it dealt with issues of colonialism and mm. so on. So it kind of put me off a little bit. Uh, but I also, you know, I've been making films since I was like 10 years old, mm. you know, telling, you know, on my little camera. Mm. And, um, but you, you know, wrote a play first, didn't you? Yes, in, in, I wrote a play. I wrote a play called Another Biafra. Yeah. And, um, you know, that focused on the Niger Delta oil crisis in Nigeria, where I'm from. Yeah. And um, that kind of led to, so, you know, several doors were open as a result. And, you know, I started making films. And I started, I made a short film called Surima about... Yeah. Uh, Rwandese family that's just recently moved to London. Hmm. Um, after because your mother is Rwandan. Yeah. yeah, my mother comes from uh, a little place called Kabari. She she sort of moved to Uganda first. Yeah, uh, you know during the in the fifties when the first genocide hmm. kicked off, and then she moved back later, and then she met my dad of course. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, so I made this story about this Rwandese family. Then I made another film called uh, The Unlucky Mother, which is again about the Niger Delta oil crisis. Hmm. And then Woolwich Boys, which is a script which I wrote about four years back, mm. focuses on the, you know, the, the exploits of some young Nigerian boys in um, South East London, circa 2002, 2003. And, you know, it's, it's a real thing that happens. And ex explain the story. I mean, almost everyone is familiar with what 419ers <laughs> are, but just for those few that aren't, explain. Okay. Well, 419 is the Nigerian penal code for yeah. fraud um, and 419ers are guys I mean the story, I'll explain mm. the story the story is about a young guy called Wale he moves to um, Niger he moves to London from Nigeria as a result of the ASU strike which was going on in Lagos at the time when the universities were on strike mm. so he moves to the UK to pursue his education uh, realises that you know it's, it's not easy to live here it's mm. not you know as some people might think back home um, and you know, can't pay his tuition fees and so then gets involved with uh, a couple of his friends who kind of get him, in, get him involved in credit card scams and, mm. you know, taking people's identities and so on. Mm. And, you know, without giving the ending away. This leads to trouble. Leads to trouble, of course. <laughs> trouble makes movies. Yes, 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 yes. And the movie will be released in the UK in November which where, where would it be possible to see it well we're hoping um, we're hoping it's going to be released in several theaters uh, particularly the Rio cinema in Dalston uh, Peckham Plex which yeah. is in uh, Peckham obviously and we're hoping for a few other theaters hopefully mm. the Odeon in, in Greenwich as well but um, at the moment we're sort of doing it on a very grassroots level mm. we're sort of going through the the um, you know, grassroots marketing mm. of the film. We're getting it through through, through many film festivals. We're going mm. to um, a couple of festivals, which I can't say yet, mm. um, because we're not allowed to. But, but um, in it, in large international cities in America. Yes, and in London as well. Yeah. Um, um, but I can't give too much information about that. Okay. At the moment. How was the film financed? The film was financed through blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, put put some paperwork together. Um, presented it to a whole bunch of people, got mm. them to see some of our films, um, and once once they saw the films, we realised that you know we're not going to get the million pounds or the mm. two hundred thousand pounds that we hoped for. So we thought, okay, how, how are there any ways that we could do this very you know in a very low budget? So we rewrote the script a little bit, and um, you know got friends and family to mm. put some money in and uh still. low budget is really low budget isn't it low budget was really low budget but if you do it right i think you can get away with it looking if you have a good story i think yeah. you can get away with it looking so what was the budget in the upshot i won't say i'll say this is yeah. just less than twenty thousand. okay yeah. and your next project um you're actually producing tell us what that is well it's, it's a film called woodfalls it's produced yeah. by really really interesting guy called David Campion um, yeah. whose first film uh, was a very very low budget very low budget film which mm. I worked on as an actor and um, 
uh, you know, it, it managed to get great distribution. But this film, Wood Falls, is about a family of Irish travellers who mm. um, they move into a small sort of rural town in England, mm. and um, they're trying their hardest to, you know, they've been moving and moving and moving, mm. and they're trying their very hardest to adjust to this new community. But you know, it's you know, there's so much prejudice that goes with it, mm. which is why I think it's, it works really well with our production company, Tales from the Motherland, because mm. we're kind of all about sort of dealing with issues. We are about the motherland Africa, mm. but we also are about dealing with things that, you know, are sort of taboo. People don't really talk about some of the struggles that these people go through. Mm. You know, we see things on television like My Big Fat Gypsy Wedding mm. and we just stereotype them. Mm. You know, but then this story is very real and the guy who wrote the script's got family mm. who are travellers. So, you know, makes it more real. It's an authentic story in that sense. Yes, indeed. We go for authentic all the time. Yeah. Yes. Anthony, thanks for talking to me today. Thank you very much.